tell us a little bit about your role at Prudential and how it intersects with climate change. I've been responsible for the development and delivery of our ESG strategy, how we steward the human impacts of climate change. And our key focus around climate change is around how we decarbonise our portfolio and in doing so secure an inclusive transition. In terms of being at COP, it's about seeing how the transition is happening and how the emerging market's voice is being represented in these discussions. What do you see as some of the most notable uh, developments in the conference so far? Prudential is now a, a business solely focused in the markets in Asia and Africa. As we all know, they've contributed less to the stock of carbon emissions, they're likely to be more affected, but at the same time may have less resources to adapt and mitigate and also have significant ongoing development needs. Looking to the trends in COP is some of the practical actions that are happening and the ongoing collaboration between public and private. There was a launch of the energy transition mechanism, which is a private-public partnership and is now being taken forward as a pilot between the ADB and the Indonesian and Philippines governments. And it's a mechanism to allow for early retirement of coal plants and at the same time allow the, the, the financing from that to, to go back into the markets and to allow for sustainable development. There's lots of work that still needs to be done, but this is, it's about coming up with these ideas and how we can start to take them forward. What are some of the, the, the key uh, uh, challenges and, and perhaps broader trends that you're seeing? So within Prudential, other elements of our ESG strategy talk to financial inclusion and diversity and inclusion around our workforce. And as we look at how transition finance is being delivered, how is it then helping to ensure broader inclusivity? How does it help drive gender equality and financial inclusion. So we're really looking at how transition finance can help support the delivery of the other 16 SDGs because it's absolutely critical that we don't forget about those. What do you see as some of the key milestones uh, looking forward into 2022? One of the biggest announcements was what we heard about the International Sustainability Standards Board being established and that's a huge step forward because we need good reporting to help make sure that capital gets delivered to where it's needed most. For the capital markets to work effectively, they need good information to measure risk and reward. The announcements of the standards are a hugely welcome step for us as a preparer and as an investor who uses financial information. We'll be looking to see in 2022 how that gets delivered and they've set some ambitious timetables. There's a huge amount of momentum, cooperation and collaboration going on. So we're confident and we'll be doing everything we can to sort of support and watch the progress of that.